Parker has dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career, and that has really been the defining moment of his career. And his story has been about perseverance and resilience. And what Coach Johnson said is this year, it's time to turn in from, you know, he's persevered through injury to he is a star player. Yeah, and his other forward mate, Dawson Garcia, the leading returning scorer in the Big Ten Conference. He'll look to make his impact early and often in this one as we get you set. The 2024-25 season is underway at the barn, and Lakai Patterson will bring it into the front court for the Gophers. Rigsby off a of screen, downhill, gets it poked away, and A will collect the turnover to start the season for the Gophers. Not really ideally what Ben Johnson was looking for. McBride involved with things early on the defensive end. He'll get it right here. Back to Jones. Pulls the trigger, can't hit, and a tough rebound by Alajiki. And he's knocked over, and a foul is called. Well, right off the bat, Oral Roberts really playing a bit of, of small ball, really around the perimeter. And, and that's something that head coach Ben Johnson said to expect with a lot of these non-conference programs. But not a lot going on right under the hoop, at least so far in this one. Inbounds McBride in the corner. Gets doubled off the screen. Able to keep his handle. Alajiki inside, trying to go right into the chest of Robinson, of, of Garcia, excuse me, who comes up limping. As McBride has it once again up top. Official stopping play for a moment here as the shot clock did not reset. Well, Dawson Garcia, not a player that you want to see limping around like that. He, like you said on that play, just didn't quite come away from it cleanly, and he's still limping a little bit. Yeah, and the official's determining right now whether that one did hit the, hit the rim or not on that layup from Alajiki. And now both teams getting a chance to stop, go over and talk with their coaches just a minute into this game. But as we mentioned it, very experienced. We mentioned 26 for the Gophers. There's still 19 years of experience through the transfer portal in ways that Coach Russell Springman added to his squad as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you're anchored by Isaac McBride for sure, but you're adding in a lot of seniority. Three from Oklahoma bringing back those hometown kids. And so it's a good job by uh, Russell Springman. He's you know, to a large extent had to rebuild this program. They had a great season two years ago, undefeated in conference play, and they've lost a lot of talent since then. And so he's really, you know, had his work cut out for him. You get to see him there. The Summit League preseason player of the year, Isaac McBride, high expectations. And Coach Johnson said it during his availability as well. When you have the preseason player of the year in a conference, it's always going to give you a chance. And in the Summit League, which Oral Robertson's have been very good at, I think they've won three of the last four players of the year in that award. Yeah, they've definitely brought in a lot of talent. Three of the last four, that's right. And it's something that, you know, Oral Roberts has only had uh, two secret scrimmages. And so Ben Johnson didn't really know how to scout them. But he said, when you're bringing back a player of that caliber, you have a pretty good idea what you're going to get. A longer stoppage here. We don't see this very often. Still figuring it out as they're going over to Coach Springman right now to decide what it was. And it looks like they're going to call a shot clock violation. So the Gophers will get the basketball after the long review. See the replay here. Just never hit the rim, but it must have reset. So in play are we right now. Patterson in the post. Going to work to his right off the glass. And rebounded by Jones. Swung into the corner, Rosario decides against the three. Alajiki ready for it, can't hit. Rebound on the offensive glass by Rosario. Rosario moving on Mitchell, now kicks it out. Attacking Garcia once again as Alajiki can't get the angle, but it goes off Mitchell's foot and the Golden Eagles will retain possession. Well, the Golden Eagles are doing a really good job of moving the ball around. So far, the Gophers have shown to be good at knowing their assignments. Parker Fox many times have, uh, has come back from double covering somebody and gotten right back into his assignment. 
McBride on the inbounds pass. Turn around, Jay. No good. And off. An Oral Roberts player didn't matter. Shot clock violation. The Gophers will get the ball back. Patterson will bring it up. It's going to be ball handler by committee at the point guard position this season. That's what Mike Mitchell told us in the preseason. So we'll see a lot of different variations as part as Dawson Garcia drills the three from the left wing and the Gophers get points first actually on the line. Well, no big surprise that Dawson Garcia is the one to open up the scoring for this year. I mean, he led last year with 17.6 points per game and just a huge caliber returner. Garcia defending Alajiki. Now up top is Miller. He'll drive to his right. Scoop layup. No good. Bounces around and Jones cleans it up on the backside. Well, there you see the adjustment by Jalen Miller, seeing what Parker Fox is doing on that double coverage and realizing even though he gets back to his assignment, that's how to exploit it. Mitchell pulls, can't hit that time. He hit three straight triples to start the second exhibition game against Hamlin, but can't hit his first one here tonight. McBride to his right, crosses over. Rigsby still with him. A little bit of contact, no call. Garcia boards it and they'll push. Mitchell again. Garcia gets space with the jab step. The three connects. Well, Dawson Garcia, like we said, somebody that these Gophers are really going to rely on heavily this year. Made a huge impact last year and really looking to bolster his communication this year. Five quick points for the fifth year. Started his career at Marquette, then North Carolina, then back to his home state, Minnesota Gophers. As that one's poked away and Rigsby will bring it ahead. Fox joined the play, lost it for a second, but puts it off the glass and in. Well, the Minnesota crowd loves Parker Fox just for everything that he's been through and everything that he's given to this program. And so very happy to see him get on the board early with his second career start. Yeah, and he's continued his perfect stretch. He had 23 points on 10 of 10 shooting in the first two exhibition games and hits his first look here tonight. Over to the wing, the three-pointer is no good off the rim from Rosario. And Minnesota pushes with tempo again. Trailing, Patterson knocks it down and the Gophers once again start hot. Well, again, Parker Fox did a really good job on that play, drawing two defenders with him, and it opened up that look that Rigsby was able to knock down. They started on a 19-0 run against the Pipers when they faced Hamlin just a, a week or so ago. They continue that hot start here tonight as Jones pushes into the lane, can't get it to go, but gets his own rebound. Miller able to save it, but it's going to start a break for the Gophers. Patterson. Decides against the transition three. Inside, Fox flushes it home. Well, such a smart play passing up that three when you've got a player like Parker Fox driving the net. Miller, nice change of pace, gets past Patterson and lays it off the glass over the outstretched arm of Parker Fox. Well, already four subs looking to come in. Darius Robinson Jr. looks like he's about to enter, and he's somebody that we're definitely expecting to see in the starting lineups. We'll see what difference he makes. Garcia through the contact, count it, and the foul. A little bit of a flavor flex there as well to go with it. Well, definitely got the crowd, crowd going up on that one. The reverse, and getting this Williams Arena crowd amped up. The Gophers have a 10-point lead here early at the barn as we go to a break here on Big Ten Plus. An offense that he's made his presence felt so far. Yeah, and not only does he make an impact offensively, but Coach Johnson wants him to be the anchor defensively this season as well. So that's a portion of his game he's worked on. He guarded guys like uh, an NBA player now, Zach Eady, and he said the confidence in the swagger coming from that is how he, he plays his defense this season. And he said it helps that there's no Edie left in the in the Big Ten basketball-wise, so definitely more room for, for him to emerge as, as a star. Knocks down the free throw. The Gophers open up their largest lead so far, 11. And we see the debut of Femi Odekali. 
Also checking in is Darius Robinson Jr. for the Golden Eagles. Jones passes up the shot. Finds the wing. Poked away, and there's the defensive presence that Oda Cali brings. Gets it stripped out of bounds, but he thought it was off the defender. It's off of him. Well, Oda Cali is somebody that Coach Ben Johnson spoke very highly of and is very excited to have back and working him into the flow. Says one of the best defenders right now on the roster. No trap here with freshman Isaac Asima, who's also making his first appearance as a gopher, the freshman. McBride up top, fire doubled. Trey Edmonds helping. And the finish right through him by Alajiki. Well, not exactly what you're expecting to see out of the Gopher defense. It's a very strong team under the net, and letting that one up is sort of uncharacteristic for how they're looking to play this non-conference slate. The three transfers touch the ball first on this possession, and Odie Cali has it now on the wing. Dumps it off. Edmonds throws it down. Well, lots of play by the Gophers, really looking to get the crowd amped up. Decent crowd here for the season opener, and you can just tell they're having fun. Yeah, and they haven't missed any of the last six shots. And that's how they have this 11-point lead. Robinson to his right, poked away in the air by Patterson. McBride, shifty, gets past Odie Cali, but the foul is called on the reach. Well, here you see that foul called on Oda Calais. Just gets a little bit under the arm, and not much you can do there once you get in that position. Yeah, and even that one too high for the outstretched arm of Trey Edmonds. He's got a, a big vertical. He said him and Frank Mitchell preseason were throwing down some East Bays in a dunk contest they put together, but that one too far out of his reach. Robinson launches. And rebounded by Odie Cali on the backside, and he'll bring it up. Two-man game with him and Edmonds, but up top is Dawson Garcia, and he fires another one and hits the Gophers up 14. Well, in that last possession for Oral Roberts, Carlos Rosario was actually wide open, not being guarded at all. And Four for nine three-pointers last year. Ball. Maybe a missed opportunity. Ball bouncing around here a little bit. And Rosario finishes through the contact. That one will count, given one more at the line. Well, with that level of back and forth, Gophers just getting a little bit sloppy. Talked earlier about how they were really on point with their assignments and just sort of fell off that a little bit with how back and forth the sequence was. Rosario at the line, the redshirt junior, transferred from Drake, but was at Washington State before that, so his third different school of his career. You see that a lot now with the transfer portal era becoming more and more prevalent in college sports, and the 7-3, Mathak Majak gets the board over Edmonds, but he'll win the second battle. Osma to his right off the double screen. Garcia gets one of his own, steps back, decides against the three. Hosting up against the taller defender, gets right past him to the rim and finishes with his offhand. Well, just that lateral movement by Garcia, tough to keep up with that. Majak has the size, but not the speed right there as Odie Cali defending McBride. Once again, they fire the screen, and Edmonds is able to recover. Awesome, a good contest. That one banks and rims around, but no good. And Odie Cali will bring it into the front court. Crosses over, denies the screen. Mitchell to his left. Inside, spinning. Turn around, Jay, no good. Alajiki on the backside. Isaac McBride still looking to get going. Goes right into the defense and can't get it to roll in. Well, Oral Roberts still doesn't have a super strong presence right under the net. And we'll see what Majak is able to do about that. But so far, still not a huge presence. Garcia once again steps outside the arc and hits Dawson Garcia. 
Have a start to the night, young fella. Well, six for six, three for three from three, and the free throw. This is exactly how you want to start off your season if you're Dawson Garcia. Half, and you see why here. Well, Dawson Garcia has just had an outstanding game, and, and you can't certainly make it all the way through the NCAA tournament with just one player, but having that strong a force to lead the team on top of the rest of the depth the Gophers have, it's a really, really good sign if you're Ben Johnson to have him start off the season this way. Yeah, and Coach Johnson has just allowed him to cook so far here today. Six shots, he's made all of them, including three triples, and really, he hasn't been shy to fire from the outside. He has not. There was the one look that he passed up earlier, I think it was two possessions ago, but he has been taking the shots, and he's been hitting them. Like we said, six for six, three for three from three, and the free throw. Yeah, but I don't want it to get lost. Mike Mitchell really played off ball last season, really taking more of an on-ball role this year. Already six assists early on in this game, and that's something Coach Ben Johnson will like in his fourth season at Minnesota. Well, big shoes to fill when it comes to assists with Elijah Hawkins, and so far he's doing a really good job stepping up to fill that, to fill that gap. So back in play, and the freshman Jojo Moore getting his first tick in college for the Golden Eagles. He has it right now on the right wing. Going at a very experienced Oda Cali. The jumper's no good, and Oda Cali gets the board. Backdoor cut, bets to the rim, finishes, counted, and the foul. Well, Caden Betts is a player that Coach Johnson has been really excited to see. He said that maybe among the most improved over the summer, just the amount of work that he's gotten in, and he sort of learned to play that three and four position and just runs the floor with, uh, with his physicality. Yeah, and the physicality and the leaping ability there to be able to hang in the air through the contact and finish, and now he gets a chance at one more. And if you're one of those Gopher Super fans for the men's basketball team, you saw the first exhibition game against Bemidji State where he posterized John Sutherland at the rim. Leaves it a little short on the free throw, but the Gophers still lead by 19. Odie Cali never afraid to full court press. More overlaps around Alajiki. Al McBride still yet to score, flips it back. Crowd loving the tough defense, poked away, Moore lost it, turnaround three. Just grazes the rim and goes out of bounds. What a defensive possession for the Gophers. Well, Oral Roberts is really sticking to that strategy of moving the ball around and staying largely perimeter focused. And it's something that Coach Ben Johnson was prepared for. Like we said at the beginning of the show, that's what he was expecting to see out of, uh, you know, many of these non-conference games that he'll have. And so it'll take a little bit more driving the rim and especially using that size of Mathok Majok to, to make a difference here in this game. Betts sets one for Mitchell. Brandon Rigsby, who is the leading scorer with 33 points over two games in the preseason, misses there. And JoJo Moore gets the rebound and will push. Jones unafraid. Can't hit. Missed a lot there. And Betts gets the board. Well, Edmonds looked at the scouting report, thought he could give it one. And it worked out for the Gophers. Johnson wanting it to go to Caden Betts. He gets it. Hand off to Mitchell who goes and attacks and draws the contact and will go to the line for two. Well, Mitchell still looking for his first points. So you see here, tries to take it himself along that baseline and just gets enough. Couldn't quite get that extra two points to make it a three point play, but he'll shoot two. 
Yeah, and already we've seen the rotations for Coach Ben Johnson. You mentioned it when they, the four substitutions almost right away in this game. They've already played nine different players. He said he'd want his rotation at the start of the year to be around 10 people. So he's nearing that number just 11 and a half minutes into the game. Well, this is certainly a game to find out both teams' styles. So you really can't emulate the real, you know, Basket, like NCAA basketball play in scrimmages. McBride driving baseline. Robinson. Miller takes a look at the shot clock, gets downhill, can't get the roll off the rim. Rigsby surveys. And Johnson calling out the play. Double screen for Mitchell. Gets space, pulls up. Three-pointer off the front of the rim, bouncing around, and Robinson collects. McBride showcases the handles, but goes nowhere. Robinson to his left. Elite explosiveness, but uh, a zero dollar finish there. Mitchell, finger roll at the rim. Rigsby thought that was goaltending, but no call. And the Golden Eagles will go the other way. Well, after a fast sequence, Oral Roberts looking to slow things down and get the ball moving quite a bit. But over the last couple of possessions, they started driving the rim more, which is what you need to see with the how open it is under the rim. Just two points in the last six and a half minutes for the Golden Eagles, trying to get the lid off the bucket here. Has no options, backdoor cut, Robinson open. Knocks down the three at the shot clock buzzer. A much needed bucket for Oral Roberts. That was a great cut by Robinson Jr. He was part of that one-two punch with Isaac McBride. And even though he didn't get the start today, a much needed three when Oral Roberts is looking at that scoring drought. Yeah, the transfer from Casper College averaged 18 and a half points per game last season. As Edmonds goes to work on the interior, floats it up, no good. And they will push the other way. McBride, once again dancing, ball on a string to his left. Soft touch falls. Well, that was really well guarded by Isaac Asama, but just a great move and not much you can do beyond you know, the defense from the freshman. Yeah, and Osama getting some ball handling duties as well, bringing it across the timeline. Ball bounces away from Mitchell. Flip back to Betts, top of the key three. Can't hit Jones boards. Well, you mentioned that ball handling is by committee. So is rebounding right now for this team. And we'll see how much they crash the offensive boards. Alajiki in the corner hits and back to back triples and now an 8-0 run of their own for the Golden Eagles over the last minute and change. Passed into nobody's, no man's land and poked out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Gophers. Kind of out of sorts here in the last few minutes are Ben Johnson's crew. Well, the Gophers definitely lucked out on that last play. It looks like in a single look from three this year, one of four from the floor and just it's tough when you are that number one player to, you know, you get the attention, especially against a bigger team like the Gophers. And you saw the player there that's been one of the main defenders on him, Femi Odikali, done a great job so far defensively as the whole Gophers team has. Patterson to his right, downhill blocked away and grabbed by Pablo Navarro. His first time checking in makes an impact. Robinson. Pulled out to McBride. Done most of the ball handling duties for the Golden Eagles here in this first half of action. Nice cut across the face, but Jones can't handle the pass from Miller. And another turnover for Oral Roberts. Well, Navarro with that block back a possession ago, that was his first of his career. He played in seven games last year, 5.3 minutes a game, and, and sophomore campaign right off the bat getting his first career block. Patterson uses the screen. Garcia calling for Rigsby. 
Tough defense from McBride. We'll have to go back door and poke that out of bounds. Well, Navarro was able to poke that one out, and the Gophers just not a lot of pressure under the basket right now, playing a very perimeter-based game. And so we'll see if they make that adjustment or, or if they're trying to focus on that right now. Minnesota now over four minutes without a bucket. Needs something here on the offensive end. Patterson, tough shot. He hits. Why not? He hit a few in his first time playing against Hamlin and hits another one right there. Well, it seemed like he thought he had less time than he did, but it, it worked. I mean, he got that shot up, maybe a low percentage shot, but a great job by him knowing that he could, he could go for it. McBride once again showing off the moves, but can't finish. Navarro on the backside, through the contact, flex on him. Well, Dawson Garcia not too happy with that one. Just realized he was caught a little bit out of position. As here, you see that replay on it. Navarro finishes the Gophers, still hold the lead here at the barn. 14 points ahead with just under four to go. The Gophers ended their near five minute scoring drought and I really can't think of a better way to do it than that Lakai Patterson three. Well, Patterson transferred he was first to who was at Missouri State, then he went to Charlotte. He was the only Charlotte 49er to start every game last year, and then transferred home. He's from Minneapolis. He had to ask his teammates for some tickets. He's got about 25 family members in attendance tonight, and a great start for that. Yeah, and you see it there. That's what he was able to do last season. He brings some scoring, and he brings some ball handling and presence to this team as well. A lot of experience on this roster, as we've already mentioned. So they've all gelled, all these mid-major players kind of making that next step to the Big Ten. Navarro converting the bucket plus the foul before the break. Hits his free throw, and the Gophers now lead by 13. Well, so far, a game of momentum. Gophers obviously started out hot, but it, it took a lot of work to, to get back in the scoring column, and we'll see if they're able to keep it going after this after that break. They've been led by Dawson Garcia, who has 16 on the game, but hasn't scored since the 10 and a half minute mark, so the Gophers need somebody else to step up. Posting up with a small defender on him, Patterson loses the ball. Odie Cali can't hit. And a good rebound on the back side by Josh Jones. Well, Garcia looks like he's moving better, which was good after how he was limping earlier in the game. Baseline drive. Navarro stuck in the mud, poked away. But Patterson's hustle just bounces it out of bounds. Good effort there, but it will stay with Oral Roberts. Rosario will check in for Robinson. 13 seconds on the shot clock. The Golden Eagles have stepped up their defensive pressure and hoping to chip away at this lead as they get closer to halftime. Done, and any way, like you said, to get McBride on the board is just need to get him going. Poked away, behind the back, Rosario showing off everything, right into the defense, and one! What a solo effort, Carlos Rosario. Well, that whole play, as he was driving forward, he had eyes on Fox, and he knew that Fox was going to go for a big-time block, and so he slowed it down just enough to draw that foul. There you see, even just at the beginning of the replay, his eyes on Fox and able to convert that into a three-point play, or a chance for a three-point play. So he'll go to the line to shoot here with a chance to cut it to 10 with two minutes to go. Knocks it down the Gophers' lead, 34 to 24. Full court press from the Golden Eagles. Just as he gets across the timeline, Patterson is bumped out of bounds. That one will go on Rosario. The Gophers a little bit in disarray right now. I think they had really game planned against that sort of small ball like we talked about, but they haven't quite fought back with the same adjustments that Earl Roberts has made. And after going cold, shooting 25% from the floor in the first 10 minutes, they've made five of the last seven and added some points at the free throw line as well. Odie Kelly makes the screen cut, pass, and Fox elevates for the layup. Well, there you see, just trying to get the crowd riled up. 
and it's working so far for him. Having a good first game of the season, but definitely needs to keep bringing that energy for the Gophers. Oni Cali gets in position, and that's what he brings. The defensive intellect takes the charge, and the Gophers will get it. Well, like we said, with the current Gopher roster, Coach Ben Johnson said that, that Femi is one of the best defenders on the roster. And, you know, talking about energy, there's not much more you can do to bring energy into a game than, than take a charge. Golden Eagles still going with some full court pressure. Osama navigating it. Double comes. He'll find his teammate Patterson who crosses over. Defender touched earth. Garcia finds the open space and finishes. Well, great, great job diverting the pressure under the rim to get that out to Garcia. And Garcia, he's going to finish that 10 times out of 10. McBride calls for the screen. Gets Rigsby. Crosses over, gets inside, poked away. Might have been blocked by Rigsby on the baseline. Deep three, Rosario. Can't hit. And on the backside, Rigsby comes up with the board. We're under a minute to go in the first half. Uses the Garcia screen, pull up Jay. No good, Jones rebounds. Jalen Miller drops it off, McBride three. Still can't hit. And a timeout called by coach Ben Johnson with under 30 seconds to go. The Gophers will have the last possession of the first half here on Big Ten Plus. Well, lots of momentum shifts in that last sequence very back and forth and both teams working with tempo and you have to figure in general that's going to favor the gophers but it also might open up the court a little bit like it got that uh it got mcbride that look and you know if he shoots that enough times he's going to make it and i guarantee that russell springman right now is telling him we want you taking that shot and it's gonna come it's just gonna take a little bit to it's gonna take some shot to get that activated. And after Navarro fell to the floor, a little no-look dime from Lakai Patterson to Darcy on that layup. As you see, the fourth year head coach here at as the Golden Gophers, a former player himself, has to be loving what he's seeing right now. Well, definitely, I think there's a lot that he really likes. I think there is a fair amount where he's saying, he. You know, there are first game jitters. It's going to take time to really develop the system that he wants to use here with, with, such, a new, uh, with such a new team that he's really built from, not from scratch, but uh, lots of experience that he's brought in from the transfer portal. And so he is, there are a lot of things he likes that he's seeing, but there's a lot that he needs to figure out with this system. 38 to 24, 15 left in the first half. Fox up top, ball movement from the Gophers. Osma gets the screen. Garcia posting up on the baseline to his left. Can't get it to bounce right that time. Rosario will dribble out the clock and the Gophers will take a 14 point lead into the break. Well, definitely not the dominance throughout that they were maybe expecting to see. But at that very last stretch, the Gophers. Isaac McBride, he's struggled here tonight. Just four points on one of seven shooting. The Gophers have put Femi Odakali and some of their better defenders just throwing them at him, and he really hasn't been able to deal with the size and length. Well, there are a couple of times that it looked like he was starting to wake up, like those free throws, uh, his first two points of the game, and they've just put the clamps on every time he sort of showed like he was about to uh, start putting more points on the board. And Mike Mitchell hasn't put many points up on the board, but he's really impacted this ball game in that first half. The Gophers hold a 14 point lead as we get you underway here at the barn. Second half of action has begun. Jones up top. Alajiki posting up, gets the spin off of Garcia and uses his off hand to finish. Well, already two guys in the paint for the Golden Eagles. That's a really noticeable adjustment from how they started out the game. Patterson finds Fox. Rigsby hasn't really gotten going offensively and took too many steps there. And his tough night from the offensive perspective continues. Well, he's contributed to this team in a lot of different ways. And back, back at Oregon last year, he had 19 games with the steal, six double-digit outings, and so he's still looking to find his groove in, in this one. 
Arcia denies the entry to Alajiki. It goes out of bounds and a turnover right back for the Golden Eagles. Alajiki, a player that we were told by people with the Oral Roberts program that he was somebody to definitely keep our eye on going into today. And so far, he's delivered. Once again, a full court press from Oral Roberts, trying to turn the Gophers over. It's been more of a problem for the Golden Eagles here today as they have nine turnovers to the Gophers five. Garcia looking. Rigsby has to cut tough defense from Oral Roberts on the perimeter. Patterson crosses over, gets inside, uses his body, can't get it to fall, tapped out, recovered Mitchell, Garcia too short on the runner. Well, Andrew, like you said, turnovers have been a problem for Oral Roberts, but only a difference of four in points off turnovers. Oral Roberts done a good job of converting. And they'll count that one as the hit. Foul on the Gophers. Just didn't give enough space on that turn, and Jones puts it in. And we'll get one more at the line. The Austin, Texas native now in the opposite half of the Red River rivalry in the state of Oklahoma now at Oral Roberts as he hits that free throw and cuts it to a single digit lead for the first time in nearly 20 minutes of game action. Dumps it off, Fox flashes to the rim and finishes. Well, that's a combination you can expect to see a lot of this season for the Gophers as they're still figuring out their exact rotation. But when you've got Garcia and Fox and Mitchell on the court, that's going to be a very productive force for the Gophers. Impacts winning there on the defensive end with that block. And just an incredible statistic for Fox to start this season. In the first two preseason games, I've already mentioned it, he was 10 for 10. He's now 5 for 5. He's been 15 for 15 in these first three games of the season. Still yet to miss from the floor. Fox right back to him. And he misses the first one. And the foul is called. So he is still technically perfect from the field. Well, Andrew, I think that one's on you, even though it, even though it turned into the foul. Good, I mean, percentages by the Gophers. Fox, like you said, five for five. Garcia started seven for seven. Uh, as you see that foul, just barely enough of him at the end. But, you know, a good look and maybe a little upset with himself that he didn't get the three-point play, but still a chance to put points on the board. This is where the Gophers have struggled to start this season at the free throw line. They missed 16 free throws against the Beavers of Bemidji State. And it didn't get much better against Hamlin. They continue to improve in that area, but we'll look to continue to build on that as they enter the regular season. Well, free throw is something that the Gophers have struggled with dating back years. But it's something that Ben Johnson has really tried to work on. And hopefully throughout the season, we continue to see that progress. Splits a pair there. Gophers back up to a 12-point lead. Jones faces up. Alajiki unafraid, can't get that one to go, and Patterson, Johnny on the spot for the rebound. They'll get a screen from Fox. Rigsby spins out of the defense and throws it right to Jones, who acrobatically keeps it in. Rosario ahead, right into the defense of Garcia. Can't get it to go, blocked by Mitchell. Minnesota will push. Mitchell finds it again, kicks it out. Garcia, another three. And tapped out our way. Rigsby saves it. He'll get it right back. Can't hit the three, and then once again, it's poked out, and Brennan Rigsby there to recover once again. Long possession for the Gophers, getting multiple bites at the apple. Spinning on the baseline, dumps it off. Garcia finishes through the contact. Well, a lot of really smart plays by the Gophers on that last possession. Even though they missed a lot of shots that they maybe should have made, there were a lot of smart plays sort of passing up a shot, uh, not going directly into double coverage, and eventually it fell through. Mitchell, tight defense. 
McBride doing a lot of the ball handling. Haven't done much offensively through the air, and once they try to pass it around, a turnover too hard of a pass from Jones. Well, Gophers have been doing a really good job, like we've talked about, pressuring that sort of motion-heavy offense. Not a lot of action in the paint for Oral Roberts, as here you see that last Gopher score from Dawson Garcia and put a cap on a possession where they got a lot of really good looks, even if it didn't turn into points until that very last bit. Yeah, and those were their first three offensive rebounds of the game on that last possession. Oral Roberts had 11. So the Gophers really trying to work their way back in that category as Fox finishes right through Navarro and flexes on him. But that's too much for the baseline referee. A technical foul is assessed. Well, that foul at the end aside, if you look at the job by Patterson, realizing when he's in a matchup that he can't get the basket over, He's done a great job consistently of dishing it out to one of the big guys and, and getting some points from it. The Gophers started off another half slow after starting very slowly in the first half, but they're on a 7-0 run in the last three minutes and maybe a little bit too much of some swagger shown by Parker Fox after the finish. Well, Parker Fox is a player that we know is going to consistently bring that energy for these Gophers. It's what he does as a leader, and he got maybe a little carried away there, uh, still, you know, at the end of that play, and, and still right now discussing that with the ref, maybe not his favorite call, but um, he's done a great job bringing that energy and getting the crowd engaged. McBride hits the first technical free throw. And once again, they're still looking to get him going, as those are points five and six for their leading scorer last season with nearly 20 points per game. He's only made one field goal here tonight. Well, one of seven, one rebound, one assist for McBride. He's done a good job getting to the li line, getting those uh, two fouls, uh, four for four from the stripe. But this team is gonna need him to get going a lot more. Yeah, and Coach Springman putting him at the line there really to try and see if he can jumpstart his star guard on the offensive end. Rosario looking inside, Fox denies. Rigsby gets plowed through, and Rosario finishes at the cup. A really good job finishing there from Rosario. Lots of pressure on him, but he was working his way through the paint. I think at one point he had three gophers on him and was still able to finish. Once again, the rotation gonna change here as Patterson is fouled by Robinson. Edmonds, Osama, and let's see, Odie Cali will come in for the gophers. Patterson, Rigsby, and Fox will leave. Well, Patterson leaving pretty gingerly. Something in the foot or ankle just got a little tweaked on that play, and so hopefully he's able to re-enter the game soon. Uh, but just looks a little bit shaken up. And in this sort of non-conference bout, not something the Gophers especially want to see, uh, as it almost happened to Dawson Garcia earlier, but he, he's looking better. Yeah, especially with the injuries they've already dealt with, with Frank Mitchell, a dislocated shoulder. He's a week-to-week, -week, according to Coach Ben Johnson, a big part of their interior. He was fourth in the nation in rebounds last season, averaged a double-double, but he will not be available for these first few weeks as Odie Cali gets fouled and will go to the line for two. And Odie Cali at the line, like we said, he's one of the biggest defenders right now, but part of the reason is also uh, Tyler Cochran out right now, uh, another injury for the Gophers. And so, you know, when you look sort of on the bright side of these injuries, it does mean players have a chance to step up in new roles. Ben Johnson said it was mostly rebound by committee, but who knows, maybe we will see more of a player step up to fill that gap left by Mitchell in these next couple of weeks. We'll have to wait a few more minutes for the first points in the Minnesota career of Femi Odakali as he misses both there. Navarro drives. The crowd thought the pivot foot moved. The refs did not. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Robinson, toughly guarded, gets to his left, can't get it to go off the glass, and Garcia grabs the rebound. Pushing tempo. Odie Cali kicks it out. Gets it right back. 
Edmund shimmy shake spin and finish. What a move from the transfer from UTSA. Edmonds had his hands in the passing lane there. McBride, two-man game with Jones. Steps through, can't get it off the rim, and Garcia claims his sixth board of the night. The Gophers slowing things a little bit down on offense, having trouble starting things here in this second half. And you'd expect they sort of rely on Dawson Garcia to get something going. He'll get it right here in the low post. Goes to his right through the defense. Counted and the foul. His second and one of the night. Well, there it is. Garcia up now to 20. 22, pardon me, with a chance to make it 23. As, as there you see, he's able to get that chance to go for a three-point play and having a career night. 22 points already. And... It'll take some work if he wants to get that career high, but a great way to start the season if, even if he doesn't reach that mark. Very efficient so far. 22 points on just 12 shots, and as more points to minutes as he's into minute 20 right now. He hits the free throw. The Gophers up 50 to 33 over the Golden Eagles. McBride. Tough defense from Asuma. Hedging the screen as Edmonds and fights back to his man. The freshman Luke Gray, who's newly checked in. And a foul is called on the reach in. That one's gonna go against Odie Cali. He thought he got all ball there, but the ref did not. Well, here you see that replay from Odie Cali. Definitely a close play and not a call that the fans are happy with, but you know, right now it won't Send them, to the, send them to the stripe, just three fouls on the Gophers in the half. Rosario gets open in the corner. A beautiful inbounds play drawn up by Coach Springman, and that may be just what the Golden Eagles needed. Well, Rosario up to 10, and a player that, you know, was maybe flying under the radar a little bit, but off to a really hot start. Odie Cali pushing his man down low, can't get it to go. And Edmonds is fouled on the follow-up. Well, the Gophers have done a really good job dealing with pressure in the paint. They have been able to draw fouls, and when it wasn't there, they've been able to dish it back out. And so there's been a lot of really smart play uh, really spread throughout this Gopher offense. Edmonds can't hit the front end of two. Gophers now five for 10 from the charity stripe here tonight, just 50%. Well, last year, Edmonds was a 45.5% free throw shooter and struggling already. Uh, you know, focus for the Gophers to figure out this year. McBride. Rosario skips it over to Robinson, sets his feet, can't hit. Good rebound, high flying Dawson Garcia to get that one. Odie Cali inside. Garcia, the smaller defender on him, goes right into him, floats it over him, and in. Well, Garcia doing a really good job taking advantage of that mismatch. And when Majok isn't in the 7-3 center, the Gophers have really just been using their size in a really advantageous way. Alajiki. It's everything but the rim. The Gophers will go the other way. A nice crossover. Left his defender in the dust. Corner three, Dawson Garcia. 28 points from the fifth year. And he's getting a student section hype here at the barn. Well, taking a stroll all the way over to the student section. He's having fun today. Parker Fox having fun together. Like they are really just bringing a lot of energy into the arena when the Gophers need a little bit of a pick me up after a slow start to the half. Portions of this game, but we have seen some fight from Oral Roberts here tonight. Well, they've made a lot of really necessary adjustments. They started out solely on the perimeter and that 
really wasn't working because it's exactly what the Gophers and, and Ben Johnson had prepared for. And so they started pressuring the paint a little bit more, and that's where they found success, both scoring out of the paint and opening up more looks outside of it when they've got that pressure. Yeah, and their head coach, Russell Springman, in his second season leading the Golden Eagles. See that, finished 12-19 and 19 last season. And him, like Ben Johnson, has a lot to flesh out with this roster. A lot of new faces, 10 newcomers this year in the double digits. So kind of finding his rotations as well, just as Johnson is doing for the Gophers. Well, he's been up there with the best, like 14 years as an assistant at Texas. He helped recruit players, including TJ Ford and Kevin Durant. And so he knows what it's like to be a part of that level of elite program. Keeping up the defensive identity is that team. They're playing full court defense still, trailing by 21 here with just over half the second half to go. A Little bit of zone here out of the timeout. Edmonds finds it in the middle, kicks it back out. Mitchell can't find space. Caught in the air, Osama open. Knocks down the three, Isaac Osama. That's the way to get your first points as a gopher. Well, great job by Mike Mitchell opening that up for him and just getting that, you know, not just first points, but first shot getting down for three, a great way to open up his career. That's tough defense, a little too much contact for the referee's liking. And that one will be a personal foul. Well, here you see that last play getting the ball way back out to Osmo. A little bit of a broken play, but it worked, and it somehow found its way through getting him on the board. Yeah, when you're dealing, you are dealing for Mike Mitchell. That is his ninth assist of the game. He has been brilliant on the ball for the Gophers here tonight. Corner shot again, and another corner three goes down. As the saying goes, it is a glitch for the Golden Eagles right now. But Darius Robinson Jr. definitely having himself a game and needed for him to wake up. He's a player that we we're expecting to see a lot out of today. Odie Cali up top. Mitchell. Once again, a 1-3-1 zone from the Golden Eagles. Nice no-look dime blocked away by Jones. And the Oral Roberts has it. Robinson gets it right back. Nice defense from Edmonds. Poked away from Jojo Moore on the court. And just stepping out of bounds is Odie Cali. So it'll be Golden Eagle ball. On that last play, two things that really stu stuck out. First, Caden Betts, after getting blocked, a great job on that block from Josh Jones. He was able to get back and get back into the defense as he really needed to. And then the Gophers were able to shift with him uh, getting back into position. Under nine minutes to go here at Williams Arena. On the season opener for these two teams, a long three. It's all there and is out of bounds. The Gophers will have it right back. I think he was looking for a little bit of a heat check after that last three, but in this situation, maybe that's not the shot to go for as you're really trying to build from momentum if you're Oral Roberts right now. Defensive, defensive intensity still at a high, still full court press. Betts looks inside. Edmonds finds a cutting Betts. Corner up to the wing, Mitchell knocks down the three and that's what he's been looking for. Hasn't done as much scoring, but now he's up to five points and he's two away from a thousand on his career. Well, it looks like Betts was almost in slow motion as he was in the air there and surveyed and made the right passing decision and able to set it up for Mitchell Jr. after one more pass. Jojo Moore gets it poked away. Mitchell on the fast break. Coasts in for 1,000. It's seven on the night and a monumental bucket for the Gopher guard. Well, Ben Johnson was saying yesterday that he's gotten a lot more comfortable in this Gopher system. Started every game as freshman and sophomore year at Pepperdine before transferring to the Gophers, and he's really found his place here. 
having himself a night. Seven points, nine assists, and two rebounds. He's been leading the way, facilitating for the Gophers, who lead by 26. here tonight. Well, Mike Mitchell Jr. reaching that huge milestone right before the break. He's at 28 minutes, which is already close to his minutes per game all of last year. And he's done a great job really uh, with assists, but also starting to get on the board for himself. Rosario working on Odicali, who pokes it away once again, another steal. Bringing it up in transition. Tries to find the corner and a good hand from Jalen Miller forces the turnover. Rosario, Yurio step. Can't get it to go, but a foul on Femi will send him to the line. Well, that's four steals for Odakali already. And so he's, you know, really starting to find his way into this defensive scheme, like we said, with Cochran out. And I'd say Ben Johnson is probably pretty happy with, with what he's done so far. Rosario at the line for two. The only player in double figures for the Golden Eagles here tonight. I mentioned Nas Reed earlier in the game. You got to see an Edwards sign in the crowd as they try and distract Rosario. Timberwolves looking to kind of build on that season last year. Minnesota fans finally have, have a, a really good team to cheer about. Well, a little bit of a slow start for them this year, but Lots of good teams in Minnesota to root for right now. Several other Gopher sports are actually on win streaks of their own. And we heard from some Gophers on the basketball team yesterday that there is sort of a winning energy right now around Gopher athletics with how, you know, hockey, both men's and women's, have been doing volleyball on a win streak. And so that's contributed to an overall winning culture that's really helped with momentum. Yeah, the Gopher football team has won four straight for the first time since 2021. And Rigsby keeps the good vibes rolling as he knocks down a right wing three. Well, Rigsby, another player looking to get a lot more involved in the system this year. Transfer from Oregon, played his sophomore and junior years there. And yeah, we talked about rebuilding a winning culture here. No one better than to bring in the Pac-12 champion, Oregon Duck, Brennan Rigsby. As Edmund slips, able to keep possession, and Odie Cali will hold it for a second and hand it off to the freshman. Well, Ben Johnson really wanted to pause that play to give them a chance to reset and run something. Odie Cali looking for his first points as a gopher, turnaround jumper off the back rim. JoJo Moore with it. Dumps it down, Jones, pump fake, and finishes. You saw that Osame, Osame, excuse me, was about to sort of go in for that. It may be a smart call to not draw that foul on the pump fake, but couldn't quite defend that easy layup. Betts was open, decided against the three. 
Awesome outside, drives, kicks it out. Betts in the corner will try this time and hits. Caden Betts showing off how he can extend the floor for the Gophers. Well, a really good offensive possession from the Gophers. That's exactly what you want to see. Good perimeter ball movement, taking the chance to drive the rim when you get it. And then if it's not there, dish it out. And that's a game plan that if the Gophers keep using, they're going to find a lot of success. Yeah, and he's a player as McBride steps back and answers. There's the Isaac McBride, the Summit League preseason player of the year we were expecting to see tonight. Well, his ninth point, but his fifth that didn't come from the charity stripe. And him getting going it would be absolutely huge for this Oral Roberts team, at the very least for building momentum into the rest of their non-conference slate this year. Odie Cali calling for a screen. Tight defense from Jalen Miller, pokes it away. Can't get away, bounces off his foot and McBride is off and running in transition. Can't hit it off the bottom of the backboard and it was, says that it was tipped and it'll stay with the Golden Eagles. A little bit of a tough sequence for the Gophers as now you see that replay and just couldn't quite get it, maybe moving a little too far forward uh, and a little bit slow to get the shot off. But, you know, tough break for the Gophers on that call as they'll see some of their uh, key players getting back out onto the court here. So the Golden Eagles will have it once again underneath. They have been money from the underneath out of bounds here tonight. And once again, they get it to the corner. Navarro decides against the three, but finds space and misses on the layup. Well, he did a good job creating space, just couldn't quite finish. And that's something that the Golden Eagles have done a fair bit of today. The Gophers will like to see this. Patterson checks back into the game and brought it up, not really favoring one ankle over the other. Rigsby finds Fox. Osman in the corner, left alone again, and he hits his second three of the night. Well, two for two career, six points. Pretty good start. He was the first player from Cherry High School in Minnesota to receive a D1 basketball scholarship offer, and he's making his presence felt. Doing it for his hometown team as he tightly guards McBride, who goes right through him and shows his experience Leaning in and then fading away off the glass and in. Count the bucket. Well, McBride, we've, keep, we've kept saying it, just such a great player that you really want to get going this season just to build momentum going forward. And that'll take us to a break. But we'll be back. Clock seven times, and they've turned it over 14. So just a great game overall from this Gophers team to start off their season. And like we said, hearing both from Dawson Garcia and talking with Ben Johnson yesterday, his defense has been a really big focus and specifically directing the defense, but he's just all around having a great game and he's certainly been helped out by some great defense by other Gophers, including especially Odukale. The leader for the Golden Eagles knocks down the free throw out of the break and some of the ones getting right back into the game as four of the five who started the game are back in with this 25 point advantage. And a foul on the inbounds pass will go against Jojo Moore, the freshman who's still scoreless here tonight. Three forty-six to go here in Minneapolis, and still the Golden Eagles and Coach Russell Springman's team pulling out all the stops, putting on some pressure in the backcourt. Patterson loses his balance for a second. And they say it's a 10 second violation on the Gophers. So a turnover, great defense in the backcourt. Well, especially as they move on to conference play in, in about a month here against Michigan State, it'll be, uh, the Gophers are gonna have to figure out how to deal with that full court pressure. And so this is a really good test for them to, to figure out that chemistry, who's bringing it up, how do they avoid the trap? And this is something that they'll have to figure out before conference play. Yeah, and fighting complacency as well as these starters are in. It's probably a statement from Coach Johnson. He wants them to continue to keep the foot on the gas in these final three and a half minutes. Mitchell gets it inside. Garcia turns. Navarro on him, dumps it down. 
Patterson, turnaround jumper is pure. Well, it's definitely a balancing act for Coach Johnson and the Gophers because you want to show you're not taking your foot off the gas. At the same time, you want to get guys experience. McBride gets that one to bounce home. The soft touch he showed earlier in the game, but maybe a little bit too late for the Golden Eagles. He's got 15 now, but the Gophers have mounted a sizable lead. Garcia doubled in the corner and hacked by Jalen Miller. Not a whole lot of movement on that last bit for the Gophers. Garcia a little bit left to his own devices, trying to make something work, looking around, and maybe gets bailed out a little bit on that foul. He didn't really have anywhere to go. A line change, like in hockey, for the Golden Eagles. as Garcia will be at the line as the Gophers are in the bonus, looking to hit 30 points here tonight. It's the first end. Well, Majok back in as part of that line change, as you said, essentially for Oral Roberts. And he's a player that just with that height, if they can get him going this year and get him on a really productive track, he's gonna be a hard player to go up against. And a 30-point night for Dawson Garcia. Gets a standing ovation here at the barn as he checks out. Nice gesture from Coach Johnson, leaving him in. He gets the foul. He gets the two points, the 30-point game, eight rebounds, and then checks right back out. You mentioned the alpha portion heading into this game, what he wanted someone to take advantage of that role, and you mentioned it. He has really taken the bull by the horns here tonight. And that's certainly as much on-court performance as it is getting everybody energized, and he's done a great job of that, too. And newly checked into the game and knocking down a bank shot three is Jackson Skipper. Well, Jackson Skipper shot just nine threes all of last year. He was five from nine in that. But great shot here as he gets on the board early this season. Yeah, and Patterson now in some discomfort after that foul, moving his shoulder around. At right shoulder, being in some discomfort as he heads to the line. Gophers, a team that, uh, as you see that last three from Skipper, the Gophers have dealt with a lot of injuries in the past and a lot of turnover. And so seeing this is maybe not what you want to see right now, but Patterson hope, hoping he stays healthy as Parker Fox also checks out to a uh, Big recognition from the crowd. Yeah, and a perfect performance from Parker. He went six for six from the field for 13 points. So that means he is 16 for 16 through three games. Two of those unofficial, but just a brilliant start to his eighth season of college basketball. Patterson hits the free throws and is now up to 10 points here tonight. Brings it up to three Gophers in double digits. Two Golden Eagles as, as McBride is actually up leading the team with 15 right now. He's gotten going a bit. Robinson gets to the spot, but can't knock it down. And Rigsby will bring it into the front court for the Gophers. Still playing with some enthusiasm with the big lead. Rigsby can't get it to go. Edmonds on the offensive glass, but Majak pulls it away. Mitchell still putting up some pressure on the defensive end. Double team, poked away Navarro, cross court pass. Robinson, skipper to his left, step back jumper, got it. Nice shot there from Jackson Skipper and these are the moments that you can earn some more minutes from your head coach when you come in at the end of the game and show some athleticism and some shot making. Well, that's so impressive also from Mike Mitchell, the amount of heavy defense that he's played. You expect to see that from a player who maybe this is his only chance to get minutes, but seeing somebody who has a pretty solidified position on the team setting that tone. Ben Johnson was really saying that Mike and Dawson Garcia and Parker Fox as well have Shown the new players, this is how we do things here, just putting in that extra ounce of effort, and it's shown in the team's culture and perseverance. Mitchell gets space again, off the rim, 
Edmonds gets the rebound and gets the foul. Trey Edmonds, the 6'10 senior, transfer from Texas San Antonio, played against the Gophers last year, and it was mentioned in his recruitment that his strong performance that night got him some looks and was one of the reasons for the offer as he misses his third consecutive free throw to start his Gopher career, but has been a force to be reckoned with on the offensive glass. Well, three rebounds, one assist, and drawn those two fouls, which even though he hasn't been able to convert on any of the four, you still want to see him getting to the line. And so he's doing a great job with that. And over time and practice, the, the free throws will come. Yeah, and the free throws continue to plague the Gophers. Now nine for 17, just above 50%. As Jojo Moore, a little ambitious there. And Edmonds sends him back where he came from. Edmonds the other way, can't finish. Majok, nice defense. Robinson in transition. Can't hit the three, Edmonds skies, and Lukai Patterson claims, and the Gophers will dribble out win number one of the 2024-25 season. And that marks 10 consecutive years where the Gophers won their season opener. Well, a big milestone for the Gophers and several huge individual performances as we've talked about. Mike Mitchell getting that 1,000th career point. Dawson Garcia having himself a day, 30 points, 11 of 14 field goals, four of five from three, four for four free throws, and led the team with eight rebounds. I think the most impressive performance outside of obviously him, Mike Mitchell Jr. setting the stage with those nine assists is, is really a role that we've seen him step into right now, and that's so needed uh, for the Gophers this year to fill that role. Yeah, one of the more historic programs in there. Nickel Patel, Nickel Patel, Mr. Arugi, Captain OID, Ipon Murchan, Alpernadi, Bandua, Lala, Government Job, Government Job, I start doing nothing. Eat ice cream, do nothing. Where is the one that you got? I'm not sure. You're a good guy. Mm. Three and the ladder. Okay, bro. 